and what is the interaction between physical security, information security, personnel security, and cybersecurity. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll give you my perspective and Scott, you know, feel free to chime in. Um, they are all aspects of security, first and foremost, absolutely. So physical security, um, gates, cameras, um, uh, cabinets that are locked, things like that. Absolutely a critical thing to keep people from walking off the street and entering your substation and just poking around and killing themselves. Mm -hmm. um, information security is similar to what we're talking about today in the sense that the OT data, that information that uh, can be configured to open things up too much or close things off too much, et cetera. The, the, so that's absolutely security. Personnel security, I think, if I'm, I'm guessing here, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, this would be like an insider threat type of a situation where you want to have background checks on people who have access to the process and, and things along those lines. There are, again, compliance regulations that require this for depending on which industry you happen to be in. And cybersecurity, cybersecurity is a, a kind of a mixture of all of those. So all of those different things, physical security, information, personnel security, all fall under NERC SIP, for example, for power generation for North America. Um, and, and cybersecurity is kind of mixed in with all of that in, in my mind. So yeah, I 100% I, I, I agree. And I think when you look at when, when we go to do a, an audit or an assessment of an, of an environment, I think the, the aspect that most surprises, because we're OT organization and we focus very heavily on OT security, but the aspect that I think most surprises when we come to do our audit is we'll ask, what happens when someone gets let go? What's mm -hmm. your pro process for de de you know, deprovisioning their systems? So, you know, the, people don't always think about that, that. And I think that's a mixture of, right? It's, did you disconnect their key card access? Did you turn off their admin access to, to systems? Th those are all things we want to find out, which is kind of a, an HR function, which I consider kind of the personnel security, right? right? I think those are all attached to, but we're also looking for, you know, key card, their physical access, the, you know, we're looking at their cyber access, we're looking at all those are components. And I, I, I think we're starting to see a shift in the, in the role. And I think we're starting to see when we when CISO stopped dropping the I out of their name, they're just becoming CSOs. We're starting to see that it's all related to one relationship, right? It's all security is so intertwined yeah. that that we really need to make sure that there's, and it comes back to the same theme, right? The communication aspect. When someone gets let go, did we communicate this to the the you know admin team that they need to remove their access? Did we tell the security guys they don't need their key card anymore? That's all interaction. It's that communication aspect. And when we blend that role into a true CSO, then we start to see that be, be successful. Yeah. And this, this also goes back to that fully automated, well, to an automated inventory of what you actually have. Do you have a way of asking a tool or a system? Did Bob, who... Uh, is no longer working for the organization. Did Bob create any local accounts within the environment? Mm -hmm. If so, have they been disabled or not? Able. You know, being able to ask that question and be confident in the response mm -hmm. that you're getting is is key. Yeah, I mean, it's it, 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 it's it, it really comes back to our theme, right? It's all about the communication, making sure every every aspect of the organization communicates when a change occurs and is aware of that change and make sure the appropriate steps are taken, whether it be hiring someone and getting, making sure their access is correct, letting someone go. Uh, I'll give you a perfect example is we had a customer where we found out that uh, there was a vendor who had a, one of his resources had super admin access on the network for a completely different aspect of the controls environment. And the reason why he had this aspect, because the, the, the facility was in a small town and there are only so many integrators in the small town. When he left one integrator who was the, the part of the super admin level who did all the domain access, he moved to another vendor, but no one ever revoked his access. So now he had both partners, customer, you know, vendors access, and no one thought to ever audit that and say, hey, why does this guy have access to all the aspects of our controls environment? He should only be looking at this specific corner. Well, it's because, well, he moved from company A to company B, and we just never revoked his access. It's amazing how those kind of little anecdotal things right. are, are prevalent. Yeah, policies and procedures are important. 